because of course they they wanted to protect the, the drain lines that they had below and the street from people that were thinking that they could extract the gold from there. I'm not sure if it's real gold or if it's false. The Seven Virgins, the group of rocks in the middle of the world. There's the rocks of the Seven Virgins. to camouflage the stone entrances to look like castles in order to prevent the Allied bombers from bombing them because they knew that they would in most cases try to preserve their heritage of Germany and that's why he decided to camouflage them and make them look like uh, castles. Of course they didn't help in the war but it left us with some pretty impressive town entrances to enjoy today. and you can see for yourself how tight navigation is here and of course usually uh, a ship coming from the opposite direction like the one which is right now on the left hand side should have stopped to give us the right of way to give us a bit more space but we are in the middle of our first officer in our captain here and just our kind of as but up to 25 meters deep, which is like 75 feet. And this is very famous, ladies and gentlemen, because this is the Lorelei Strait. Of course, this would be not the original shape of the rock. It used to come in the middle of the river. They had to chop it down and adjust it in order to create the street below it, and of course, in order to make the navigation much safer for the passing ships. So ladies and gentlemen, you can see the lower line sign right now on our right hand side. Coming up. And she would sing with her enchanting voice while combing her beautiful long golden look uh, head. And the captains would lose their mind and navigate the ship to the direct to the rock. <laughs> of the Lorelei, ladies and gentlemen, and that's where, according to the legend, she used to sit uh, when she was singing her song. So, Lorelei is that. Count's Castle, the actual name of Castle Elbogen, was founded by Count Johann III of Castle Elbogen in 1307. They came around the 18th century, fully destroyed by the French in uh, 1806, who constructed around 1897, and then 19. It was purchased by a Japanese businessman for several million German marks who had converted it into a luxury hotel. So ladies and gentlemen, on the right hand side, no taxi and bogus or taxi. 
Yeah. It's time for a nice, refreshing ice cream. Our maitre d' Radu is leading his team uh, around. I can see Josh, I can see Jill, I can see Kate. They're passing around with some nice ice cream for all of you to enjoy this wonderful morning. Now, I would like to talk about the place on our left-hand side, St. Goa. St. Goa is my favorite architectural town. And what do I mean by that? Here, you can see all the different yeah, all the different styles of architecture from the different time periods. You have half timbered houses. You have Renaissance or Romanticism period buildings. You have Romanesque constructions. You have Gothic, Neo-Gothic. So all of these different architectural styles interpret beautiful, beautifully in the little town on our left hand side called Saint Paul. Archaeological excavations have shown that the first Thank you. You're welcome. With your helping hands, how did you overcome the roofs of the world? I gotta go eat my ice cream. Mm -hmm. For science, we're being spoiled. So, I like it. On our left hand side, ladies and gentlemen, right now, Reinfeld's Castle, 1245. Pardon? They're gonna have to come back with a washcloth. <laughs> Probably will. And the name is Mouse Castle. Mouse Castle, also called Dörnburg or Thurnberg, is one of the most advanced installations of its time and the most technically advanced and splendid buildings overall. Besides the newly constructed roofs and restored wall stucco, Mouse Castle has not lost any of its medieval charm. It became the well-loved residence of the Archbishop of Trier, Berg. Now, due because of missing restoration work and destruction in several walls, Mouse Castle ended up as a ruin until the middle of the past century when the ruins uh, were restored by the German architect called Gertner. Now, ladies and gentlemen, Mouse Castle is also known for a different reason because you see the little town just below it is called Velmi. And a local gentleman is world renowned for some very special skills of his. He's considered to be one of the best trainers for birds of prey. And sometimes we are lucky enough to see the birds flying around the castle because that's where he goes and trains with them. He's really famous, apparently, Mouse Castle. Mouse Castle. And now, ladies and gentlemen, as we exit the, the Strait of the Lorelei, the, of the Lorelei, excuse me, I would just like to mention that the navigation rules change again. The priority suit will belong again to the ship coming from the opposite direction. They will have the right of The Cross the Schengen is the local park. What makes them so interesting and so unique is the fact that if you want to visit a church, the only way in is through the park. There is no other entrance. There is only through the pub. You can see the two buildings are literally attached to each other and the only entrance is right there in the front. The interesting coincidence is the fact that the, the pub belongs to the reverend. So as you understand, Sunday service has a whole different meaning. Around. I don't know if you've noticed uh, earlier, but perhaps you have seen that parts of some vineyards are covered by a blue mesh. And that blue mesh has nothing to do with protection from the birds or something. It is, this part of the vineyard is kept for a very special wine production. It's a late harvest and we talk about December and quite in the early hours, like 3, 4 o'clock in the morning, where the grape is totally frozen and that harvest is used to make ice wine. Especially those of you from Canada, I found out two years ago that you also have ice wine. A quite special taste, quite unique taste, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, and quite expensive as well because of the limited amount of uh, ice wine that you have getting produced. But the vast majority of the barges belong to private owners, people that uh, work and live on the barges every single day. You have, in most of the cases, the entire family living on the barge and contributing to the day-to-day -day operation of the barge. 
You've noticed perhaps for yourself that they, the aft part of the ship has been converted into living quarters. They have their bedrooms, their kitchens, their living rooms, everything there at the back of the barge. And uh, if you have kids also in the picture, sometimes you, in larger barges, you can see that they have even playgrounds for the kids. But when the time comes for them to go to school, then, of course, we talk about boarding school. They have to go to boarding school. Liebenstein Castle was a Ghana bedroom, which means a castle occupied by several families in different houses. Belonged to Nassau Saarbrücken later on and received imperial knight st status. Both castles are known as the enemy brothers, and this tale dates back to a family war that took place between the two castles over the years. The exact history is not known, but it is alleged that the family war was initiated when the two sons of the Bedrake of Sternberg and Liebenstein tried to, let's say, tamper with the division of the inheritance with unlawful means. The two arm walls, the Knights of Sternberg Castle, used to protect themselves from the Knights of Liebenstein Castle and still be seen today. Of course, the locals, the people, uh, found their own romantic explanation for the war between the two brothers. And that was the love of the two brothers for the same women. So, ladies and gentlemen, Right now, coming up ahead of us, on the right hand side, the enemy brothers, Liebenstein, Sterbeck Castle, 13th, 14th century. And uh, with those two castles, we will end our presentation, travelers, along the right. There is one more castle, ladies and gentlemen, coming up ahead of us, and that would be a kilometer 580, and that will be our destination for this afternoon, the Maxwell Castle. As I said, on the right hand side, kilometer 580. Maxwell Castle, you will be able to see also from the river. And I would just like to mention something about the Maxwell Castle, which I find it absolutely fascinating. There is uh, an even Tutu original replica in an amusement park in Japan. This was constructed after the German Castle Association refused to have the castle dismantled and reconstructed in Japan in return for 250 million German marks back in the day, which was a lot of money. But Maxwell Castle, ladies and gentlemen, Quite impressive, kilometer 580 on the right hand side. And as I said, Sterenberg and Liebenstein Castle uh, will be the ones which uh, will end our narration. I sincerely hope you enjoyed this part of the river. I think it's absolutely breathtaking, so beautiful, ladies and gentlemen. And I hope you will take uh, a lot of beautiful memories from the Middle Rhine, from the Rhine Gorge, and our presentation, Travelers Along the Rhine. Thank you very, very much for your kind attention. Enjoy the rest of your morning.